All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of Real Talk NFT. Today, we have a real special guest here. We have the CFO of Taffy, Preston Wu. Uh, welcome to the show, Preston. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Really excited to be here. Always happy to talk all things Web3. Yeah, same here. And I see for those of you listening who can't see right now, uh, Preston actually has on some augmented reality uh, Clone X reptile avatar on his face. Looks really, really cool. Yep, yep. I like to sport my avatars. I, I live and talk the way what we do. So, so happy to do, uh, you know, wear this. It's one of the projects we help support. Awesome. Yeah. So for those of those, for those of us in the NFT landscape who's not familiar with Taffy and Daz 3D, uh, I know you work with both companies. Can you tell us a little, give us a little bio about yourself and also intro to the company? Sure, sure. Um, I'll talk about the company and I'll talk, then I'll talk a little bit myself. So uh, we were started, actually, we're OGs in the 3D uh, creator space. Uh, we've been around for 20 years. Our, uh, we were known as Daz 3D, and that's a, a vibrant community of like a free software that's used by millions, uh, 3D rendering software that's like very good for both entry level uh, as well as professionals to like drag and drop um, uh, 3D content, make things in uh, minutes as opposed to like months type of thing. And so, uh, you know, famous 3D artists in the Web3 space, it's like people or fuck render or ghost people like that use it um, or animation studios or, or game studios. So it's a free software with tons of content and a very vibrant creator community. So we started that company uh, 20 years ago. Uh, and so we've seen the evolution of Web1 to Web2 and Web3. Um, two years ago, we started the Taffy brand and that's kind of the, um, the parent brand we use. Uh, but we use both brands like uh, for, for all the things we do. And we started Taffy really as the metaverse and avatar content became uh, more accessible to uh, the consumer market and not just for devs and video game and, and, and studios and things like that. So we started Taffy when we did um, all the avatar content for all the Samsung Galaxy phones over a billion devices. Um, you know, we started going to the Unity Asset Store, we're a preferred creator on Roblox, on uh, Decentraland, Zepetto, all that stuff started making avatar content for all the different metaverse outputs. And uh, in the last couple of years, we've really leaned into Web3, NFTs, uh, you know, PFP projects for the tier one companies, our own projects, different collabs with a lot of big brands coming into the, uh, you know, coming into the Web3 space, which we're super excited about. Um, my personal background, I'm the chief strategy officer and chief financial officer for Taffy and Daz3D. I joined two years ago. Uh, I've had like a I did my started my career in like investment banking and private equity as an investor, but then moved into the tech side. And uh, you know, a couple of years ago, I was like, I have to get into uh, the Web three and the metaverse space, and you know, joined Taffy and Daz as the chief strategy officer to help uh, with partnerships and uh, you know, moving into the the space. And it's been a blast so far. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. <laughs> so tell us how you made that transition, investment banking into Web3 and 3D. Is that something that was a passion of yours always? Yeah, no, I mean, I did uh, I did like, you know, finance and deal making and things like that. And then uh, I went into like uh, uh, tech, but it was like more like mobile and like, you know, hard tech. Uh, I was the uh, CFO of a company called Sarcos Robotics, which uh, is a publicly traded company now with like exoskeletons. Mm. And then I was like the chief strategy officer for a company called Ossia, which is wireless power over the air. I'm still on its board. And then I saw everything going on with the metaverse. And it actually took me over a year to convince uh, Taffy and Daz to hire me. Mm. Um, and part of it was like, here's what I think. There's such strong capabilities, uh, like amazing tech, amazing people. It's a company out of Salt Lake City. I was like, hey, if we, if, if some of the partnerships that I think I can bring to the table, some of the uh, implementations... So Web3 is just another output for us of the tech and the art and uh, the capabilities we have. And so um, that was really the pitch that it took a year to convince. Uh, and it was during the pandemic. So it's not like a, not like a real year, but it was like during the pandemic, I was like, hey, this is <laughs> this is something that's going to really be uh, the future. Um, and uh, I think, you know, to Taffy's credit, I, I joined. We were all behind that strategy and. Um, the rest is history. And I know it's only been two years. I've, I've, I joined Taffy a little less than two years ago, but in Web3, it's like dog years, you know, it's like, it feels like it's been forever. <laughs> so, and, 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 and uh, with, uh, with yeah. us and, and within more, more good than bad. Yeah, definitely dog years in Web3, but not only that, people 
applied that same logic to the COVID lockdown where, no. where we work remotely. COVID felt like dog years also. So it was seven years plus seven. You actually been there for 14 years. Preston. Yeah, yeah I've, been there, I've been here for like a hundred years. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but, but you've done a great job. I've seen the collaborations, partnerships, just at every facet of Web3 that I've been involved with. And I've been with, involved with a lot of different spaces in Web3 uh, as a collector. And you've done such a great job of collaborations with big brands and just a question for you, because you're working with the big brands, you yep. know, with, with, throughout these last few years, are the big brands, we know they were testing the waters, maybe they're, some say they were there for a cash grab. Are they here to stay now? Are you seeing different types of integrations now than before? We know that you, you just launched Game of Thrones with Nifties. So tell us about, you know, those, I know there's a load of questions, so let us know about that. Yeah, no, I mean, we'll, we'll uh, so Game of Thrones with Nifties and, and Warner Brothers and HBO, um, you know, those are that that's here to stay. I'll, I'll say that. Um, and there's a lot of cool stuff that I think we'll be starting to reveal uh, in the next couple of weeks uh, about that. But it's not just another uh, like avatar project. It's got a, a lot of really cool features uh, associated with it. And by the time um, you know, the podcast shows, um, you know, we'll probably have a lot more publicly announced by that point. And so it's going to it's going to be really cool, fun uh, activation um, that is uh not not done before uh so like a lot of unique stuff about it um but to answer uh and, and that's going to be um for a, a long period of time too not not just like uh certainly not a cash grab very authentic very uh much for the fan base as well as for the you know dgen crowd so uh, appealing to both but just uh understanding the the importance of that brand and the fan base and, uh, you know, the, the finale of House of the Dragon season one and, you know, House of the Dragon season two mm -hmm. starting. Um, uh, I don't know if that has been officially announced, but it's not going to be like in a couple months time. So it's going to be a, a it's going to be it's going to be a very good activation to fill that gap for the fans and for the Web3 crowd um, about about brands coming into the space. Uh, are they in are they in it for the long run? I think we get a you know, I would say more yes than no. Um, by the time it comes mm. to us, uh, they know that we are not in it for cash grabs. We're not in it for, um, you know, it has to be authentic. It has to have uh, long term value, uh, you know, has to uh, appeal to the for the right reasons. And so we say no to a lot of stuff. Um, but but yes, I, I would say it's, it, there, the, you're, we're seeing more and more of that coming even during this market, which we call the build market. Um, it's like the brands have already <laughs> hired uh, people that are dedicated to Web3 uh, when in, in the space of like, you know, uh, Warner Brothers, for example, which has tons of IP, um, you know, they have a, a full team dedicated to, to Web3. Um, I would say the same thing about NBC Universal. I would say the same thing about um, a lot of the brands we work with, like they've already done the test and learn. They've already onboarded from an education perspective. They know better than most where their customers are going. And the spaces that you're seeing mm -hmm. and the companies that you're seeing lean in, uh, they've already gotten over that hurdle and they know this is the future. So I would say companies in like gaming, companies in entertainment, and it makes sense, you know, for uh, if you think about like uh, digital skins and like, you know, uh, you know, digital economies, uh, companies in the fashion brand, like the, the companies that understand like engagement, fans, uh, skins, uh, collectibles, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that type, those types of things like scarcity and brand value, like those are the ones that are leaning in more. Uh, and even I would say like that extends mm -hmm. to CPG that extends to the internet economy, uh, just, and, and I, I not limited to like gaming entertainment. It's like all, all of those that are going to be touched by that rely on digital content. Obviously music is a big one too. Um, but like everything that touches digital content, um, the leading companies know, it's going to be disrupted by the blockchain where things are turning to digital assets. Yeah, it seems like there's so much world merging happening here. Absolutely. With, with everything that you just said. And, and another wrench that's being thrown in the mix right now, I've seen, I'm sure you've seen the highlighted most recently is the term AI. And yeah. we've seen that with the Lenza app, everyone's utilizing that with, you know, just digital um, images for now. Is that already applying to 3D art? Is that kind of far away? Yeah, no, it's a good question. I can tell you what um, we're doing. So um, some of the tech that we're using, it is for, it is it is like ML, I would say for now. I mean, uh, you know, I think everyone calls it AI, but 
um, you know, the right before AI, uh, you know, and, and there's some AI in, in the space. But what we're doing is, um, you know, we can we we have avatar SDKs and we kind of consider like everything to be avatars, even like backgrounds or vehicles and sets. And think of it like Lego blocks where you can just build things. Um, mm-hmm. We can kind of create, uh, you know, billions of different iterations of something like so we did the Batman cowls. Uh, earlier this year with mm-hmm. Palm yeah. uh, NFT and with Warner Brothers, and uh, you know we uh, rendered we we rendered two hundred thousand unique uh, you know uh, Batman cowls that looked like they were drawn by one hand, but it was very sophisticated uh, algorithms and ML uh, where you can create that. We build the traits, but then you can generate them. But it's like you can't have a purple uh, that doesn't you know work with like a, a blue that they they don't contrast and. Mm. compare well to each other they don't they don't tie or um if like we had mr you know mr dr freeze uh you, you know has to like everything has to look like that um uh that look uh whether it's the the cowl or the jaws or the the ears or things like that mm. so uh we actually uh, but to, to create that we actually had um we used ml to create two billion plus of those uh and then we we selected the two hundred thousand wow. uh, best wow. ones and then uh, that collection size is currently, you know, a little over 11,000. So uh, we do have things like that. But you, if think about if you want to apply that for uh, gaming or if you want to apply that for advertising or uh, other ML algorithms, it's like we can create with our tech and uh, in 3D that's performant in all the different metaverses and game engines, um, uh, billions of different iterations of something. Uh, and it, it all looks like it's drawn by one hand. And you can do so, a lot of learning off of that, and you can do a lot of uh, generative, generative outputs out of that. So that's what we're doing. I think there's a lot of people, and we're doing that today. And so you asked me, like, is it out there now? Mm-hmm. Like, different flavors of it are definitely out there. Um, uh, you know, yeah. there's different AI stuff in 3D, but that, that's what we're doing. And um, we think that's very valuable. And we know uh, a lot of, like, the... Um, and we can't, can't talk about the companies, but the companies that like uh, monetize with like pictures and and things like that, like that's something that's very important for them too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, I see machine learning or AI apply, yep. you know, as a one-time use case, as a cool use case for what we're seeing now, the profile pictures of individuals taking selfies and they apply that with, you know, AI and ML in the back. But it seems like there's more use cases for it in, in the in the perspective of the metaverse and nfts and building worlds out there digital worlds and in gaming can, can you tell us what what have you seen as like the best use case um or experience that you've had with 3d 3d ar vr and um just ai in general yeah i mean so a lot of people because of the pandemic um uh you know they uh they, we were talking over video conference now not meeting in person so a very easy use case right is like mm-hmm. what we're doing now is like, <laughs> um, you know, this is some of the Batman cowls, right? Or uh, this is my doodle. That's uh, so cool. Um, the PFP, or I've got, oh, all the wow. <laughs> I've got all the different clone X, you know, I can cycle through it. Um, like, you know, things like that. Yeah. Or, um, and this is all 3D. We built it in 3D. Uh, and this is snap filters, or we could use Unreal Live Link or anything like that. These are real life use cases. And people use them for Twitch streaming. We can use it for VTubing. Uh, things like that. And that's that's just like out of the box, like already comes with all our stuff. Um, as part of the what Artifact and, and CloneX uh, did, um, they released all the 3D files or, you know, we, we helped them with that. We um, we released all the 3D files for their CloneX, um, uh, you know, for, for CloneX uh, avatars, full body in Unreal, in Unity, in Max Maya Blender, Cinema 4D, so all the different major 3D uh, software outputs. And we see people building worlds and metaverses and games mm-hmm. with those. And that's, um, we can't disclose what percentage of the population of the uh, CloneX holders, but it's a big percent. It's not like a small percentage of that mm-hmm. uh, um, uh, that project or, or building stuff. And it takes time to build. And so you're not seeing it right now, but it takes uh, what we're seeing as like first glances is like amazing. And that's a creator that's a creator community for for that particular project um and so i would say like we're seeing things right now out of the gate where everyone you know is using um their filters and ar uh using it the shoes ar the hoodies the like the wings that show um an ar or you're, you're getting like physical shoes and you're able to connect it connect it with ar and then connect it with the metaverse on the background 
Um, that's happening today. Uh, and then in when it takes, you know, it takes about, you know, 12 months, if you're really fast to up to three years to build a, a, a you know, game, then you're going to start seeing that happen uh, as well. And, and we're really excited mm-hmm. about the more immersion in that space. And I think um, the podcast listeners know, like, you know, gaming is the new social media. Like that's, that's how people are um, mm. interacting. Or if you talk to anyone that's 13 years old that plays Roblox, they know that that's their social media, <laughs> that's their community. So that's, that's what we're really excited about. And there's the, I can talk about it for a long, a lot more about like what brands are doing too, but that's what I'm excited about personally. Yeah. Uh, to your point, the, the newer generation, and that's why I feel a little bit left behind. They're already yeah. doing that. They're creating the worlds within Roblox before, um, yeah. you know, without the help of Dad 3 d But they're doing 3D worlds already. Yep. And uh, whereas someone like myself, I came into the gaming space, not, you know, building worlds myself. I went into a world, but the, the new generation is already building it. So they're already, you know, tuned to those skill sets. And I, I, I foresee everything being 3D. You know, I do a little bit of Photoshop here and there, but it seems like everything's moving towards 3D. Yeah, I mean, uh, we, and you guys have. We, uh, I was going to say that you guys offer a free studio for people to to learn about it. And yeah, for, so for those entering the the world of 3D for the first time, the creating creating wise, like, is there anything that um, you can give them a tip on, or anything you want them to know? Yeah, I mean, Daz Studio. A lot of people started because it's not. Uh, a lot of 3D programs, um, you know, uh, require, they're basically like you have to know CAD, right? It's like almost like you have to have that level of already built in sophistication. Uh, Daz Studio, which is our free software, uh, was built for onboarding uh, uh, people that are, that, are, that are new to the 3D space. And so um, you can create scenes, you can create characters, you can pose them, and then you can export them to like Cinema 4D to animate them very quickly. Uh, without any prior knowledge. And we have free master classes on that as well. Um, and so uh, if you spend a couple of weeks, you can be, um, you know, an expert uh, or, or very competent. And then um, we, I would also encourage like, hey, start with Blender too. So, uh, and we work together in the same uh, workflow. Mm-hmm. It's like, that's another free uh, 3D software. And if you kind of dedicate several months to, to, to Blender as well, you can, you can you know, be proficient in it. But it's just... Um, uh, it's a lot easier than it used to be before. I think the future is 3D. Um, I think right now, like 3D artists and uh, are, are what like, uh, you know, developers were um, 15 years ago. So I think it's a growing, like everything's going to be in 3D, uh, our, our digital interactions. It's going in that direction. So I would highly encourage people to, to, learn, to learn 3D. Uh, you got me. So after this, I'm going to start jumping into Dad 3D Studio and Blender. And because I see it, I, I have preparing for this podcast. I, I was proficient, somewhat proficient in Photoshop, but I'm looking at the new world like I need to be proficient in 3D. <laughs> really, really honestly, because everything from augmented reality, Snapchat lenses, the metaverse is all going to be around 3D. Yep. Um, can you, let's uh, take a pivot really quickly. Just a question about the blockchain and how it applies to you know 3D. I, I, you, on the website, it says everything's on chain. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong. Is that possible? Like, I know it takes huge, you know, computer computing power to make 3D renderings and whatnot. Uh, Can you explain that on chain uh, statement to us? Sure. Which uh, which statement uh, was it? If you don't mind reminding me, Uh, I just want to make sure I'm accurate. Uh, um, So in the world of collecting NFTs, uh, in in my experience, uh, people or projects say, hey, our project's on chain which means that it will never be, the, the imaging will never be taken off, right? Because if it's IPFS or whatnot, yes, it's yes, pointed no. to a different direction. You, you can have NFT that no longer looks like the NFT anymore. It could be a blank slate, right? <laughs> so on-chain, from the way I understand is that all the data is on the blockchain. It takes huge you know, transaction fees to get everything on there. Uh, so when I see on Taffy that says, you know, bringing iconic brands and memorable on-chain experiences, leveraging Web3. Uh, my initial thought is like, wow, this, this whole 3D universe is going to live on that chain. I'm like, that's not possible, is it? I'm probably yeah, taking I mean, it the wrong way. Yeah, no, so um, we like on-chain, we t- take it into like, hey, there's, it's token gated. Um, there's different experiences. Uh, we mm-hmm. do both. Um, you're right, like the 3D, if you put that on-chain, and I think some projects do like uh, Moonbirds and, and things like that. Um, I, I believe, and I and don't, you know, I'd have to double check, but I, I do know some projects are on chain, like on chain monkey, some projects are on, you know, that's IFPS. And then some, some projects are on like CDN, which is like, uh, you have the token, which you can, you know, does refer you to 
uh, the 3D that's that's off chain and that can be upgradable. And we do both, right? I mean, so it depends on what uh, the needs are of the project uh, and the benefits and, and kind of like, um, you know, if it, if it warrants, you know, uh, the, the art to be on chain and for that specific purpose, um, you know, makes a lot of sense. We'll do that. Uh, it does take, like you're right, it does take a little bit more work and more, more, uh, more, more fees and things like that. But if it's like, hey, for this certain project, uh, it's better and more efficient uh, to, to be, uh, you know, a CDN, like we'll, we'll do that too. So it really depends on which project we're, we're working on. But that's a, that's a, um, that's a longer discussion for sure. And, but uh, we, we, cert- we have those capabilities and, and uh, uh, depends on what our partner needs are or what our uh, goals are for the project. Got it. Yeah. L- last question here, Preston. Uh, you work with so many brands, you have a vision, you're a strategist, you have a vision for the future. How far are we from Ready Player One? I see that we have digital personalities today, like FN Mecca. I know PacSun just signed a digital avatar to represent their brand. Uh, are we no longer needed? Like what? <laughs> brands are already signing these avatars uh, as IP, kind of like a Mickey Mouse, right? And yeah. to put on their brands. I mean, What's the vision that we see here? How far in your mind, like your, I wouldn't say your widest imagination, but like what's going to happen, you know, within the landscape of 3Ds, Web3 in the near future, let's say one or two years or, or even further, like our widest imagination, what's some really interesting use cases that might come? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I think with like the, you know, VR has always been one of the promises, uh, but the hardware was just never there. Like it was always kind of clunky and too heavy and like kind of strapping a battery, like a phone to your head type of thing. And then it became wireless. And then all of a sudden, mm-hmm. uh, once it was wireless, like VR headsets, uh, it was like the number one downloaded app on, uh, you know, the Apple store and things like that uh, last year, last, uh, you know, holiday season. And uh, with the new innovations, like we're much, much closer. It's been a long time coming, uh, but there's a lot more people building in kind of the the ready player one type of environment than there has ever been before and it's like the consumers are finally ready for that adoption i actually think the things that will be in the next one to two years what you're asking it's like more of the ar stuff more of augmented reality um Mm -hmm. uh, a a combination of the physical and the virtual but we're still in the physical world um i don't think we're going to be hooked up uh, online to ready player one uh in the near future but i think there will be flavors of that and I don't think it's one metaverse um, right now. I think there's gonna be many different metaverses that are like purpose built uh, right now until it's like all integrated, until we we're we're living you know in a in a single virtual world. But that's not that's not something that I see on the horizon in uh, in the next few years. But but I also think with that said, maybe I'm speaking of both sides of my mouth. I think there'll be use cases we've never dreamed of. I mean, right now. Uh, mm-hmm. Like even Ready Player One and the things that we imagine seem like they're iterations off of our current physical world of the physics. But if you think about mm-hmm. it, we should not be constrained right. by physics in the virtual world. It's like, yeah. you know, uh, we see that with avatars as just a digital identity. Um, there's three different ways people express their themselves in, as their digital identity. But one of the big ones is like, you know, it's not like a necessarily a human. It's like, you know, I was just a reptile earlier. And then... Once we start seeing that, then we're not mm-hmm. constrained by physics, then we'll be all sorts of amazing use cases that, yeah. uh, you know, we're, the limit is really only our imagination. Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely see a lot of different adoptions and, and people just utilizing these avatars in a different way than more. I speak for myself, for example, a lot of people in the Twitter landscape, the NNT landscape, they want to uh, not necessarily hide behind the avatar, but they might feel more comfortable expressing themselves you know, through uh, NFT or in this, in your case, a 3D imaging uh, um, and just there's going to be so many different ways to represent ourselves. So that's going to be so crazy to see in the future how we are going to communicate in different ways. Absolutely. Yeah, perfect. So uh, I'm not going to try to squeeze any alpha from you uh, today, Preston. I, I know that you have a lot of stuff upcoming that you can uh, talk about, but I really look forward to our next conversation. Not I like you know, like you said, dog years and, and a year from now, where are we going to be? It's just going to be so exciting. So we'd love to have you back on. Uh, love to, you know, uh, talk about that when the time comes. Yeah, I would love to. I mean, love to be on. Really appreciate the time. Uh, I love I, I love the audience that, you, that you've built. And so a um, lot of a lot of great stuff coming. And I think like uh, uh, I would just end by saying, like, there's a lot of uh, a lot of dope shit being built. So um, that's that's kind of where we are. <laughs> 
Yep, I'm still on that. I'm, I'm waiting for the Game of Thrones announcements. I'm on that wait list for the uh, with the Nifties. I'm, I'm like checking every day. I'm like, when's it gonna come out? So I'm really waiting for the sneak peeks. I might, I, I might know a guy that can help you out there, Joe. So just uh, DM me separately. <laughs> All right, you heard it here. No, okay. All right, All right. got it. Appreciate your time, Preston. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, team.